Well, hello. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to install a tankless water heater. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and get this water heater out of the box. Um, the box generally comes with something similar to this. I like to use these to hold uh, the water heater up off the ground while I'm working on it. Or you can do this on the tailgate of your truck. Um, so go ahead and locate your isolation valves. Most of the time, these are sold separately. They're in a separate little box. It'll tell you what it is. Um, but go ahead and get your isolation valves out and get them ready. And uh, some of the water heaters, it comes in the box with the water heater, uh, but most of the time you have to buy these. Now, I went ahead and got a little head start here because uh, I know y'all didn't want to see me just threading fittings together. But these are your isolation valves or your service valves. And the reason for that is this is how you would flush your tankless water heater out or what they call descaling it um, is through these little service ports on the front of it. Now, you're going to want to go ahead and get you some kind of adapters to switch it over to whatever plumbing pipe material you're using. We use PEX a lot, so these are some PEX adapters, three-quarter threaded PEX adapters uh, on your fresh water coming in. Teflon tape. Don't pipe dope it. Uh, we use pipe dope for other things, or thread sealer. We call it pipe dope. Uh, don't use that stuff on your potable water or your fresh water coming in because there's all kinds of little filters, there's aerators on faucets. That pipe dope stuff can get caught in those, it can get caught in shower heads uh, and cause you some big problems later on. So only Teflon on your supply for your water. And of course you'll go ahead and put this together. Uh, these have a union so you're gonna uh, put your thread tape on there and screw the top parts of your unions on as I've done here already and remember these unions all of them are gonna have like some type of little o-ring there's a bunch of different isolation valves out there uh, the o-rings are different uh, these are really neat because there's a ridge there that holds that on and then of course you would thread this on you don't need to Teflon tape the union because it has that o-ring seal um, but you can go ahead and put the bottom half on now this setup here is the way they show you in all the pictures and this setup here works great on an internal unit but when you're working with an external unit you have to have a pipe cover on it so a lot of times this uh, hot side you're gonna have to flip it the other way uh, but try to remember you need to access these ports at some point to flush these water heaters out uh, I don't think they did a really good design on how these things hook up but uh, I didn't design it I just put them together but that's pretty much it. You're going to do this work on the floor, on your tailgate. Get yourself set up as much as you possibly can. It's so much easier to do it down here than to have to work underneath this thing when it's hanging on a wall. Alright, the next thing you're going to want to do is prep your work site where you're going to be hanging this water heater. Uh, as you see here, uh, we've put this water heater up and down a couple times. So we've already got some boards mounted here. Now, when you're dealing with an external unit, you're going to be mounting these to the brick. So you're going to want to have your hammer drill, uh, an impact hammer to be able to drive these little screws in. But if you're on an interior wall, you got sheetrock. Now there's studs every 16 uh, inches on center behind that sheetrock wall. And that's kind of what we've done here. You're going to have to nail some boards across that span uh, and then you'll be hanging your water heater to these boards which is attached to those studs. So you're going to want to cut some boards, measure your water heater from top to bottom. Now I measured ours here and this one is actually a little different than the last one we had here so I am going to have to cut another 2x4 and mount it to the wall. Alright, now this is the hard part. 
uh, you're gonna have to catch that little hole, that little eyelet on this screw and be careful because it can be pretty tricky. But there you go. All right, now the next phase of the process here is you're gonna get out your little torpedo level or any kind of level really, a four foot, any of those will work because it's not really anything in the way, but these torpedoes are really neat because they'll stick to the side. So uh, put your little torpedo up there and get your uh, unit level here. You can also put it on the top, but that's kind of hard to see sometimes. Uh, I, I don't like putting them on the top because I've left so many of these on job sites because I put it up there and forgot about it. If you leave it over here, it's more in your line of sight and you're not as likely to leave it. Uh, next thing you're going to do is you're going to get out your little impact or a drill with a screwdriver bit in it and there's more holes on this thing. You're going to anchor these off with your impact. Now the next part of the process here is you're going to connect this PEX. Uh, you're going to know where your water heater goes and the location of it on the house because your rough end guys are going to loop uh, your water line out. There's going to be a red for hot and this white over here for cold. If you're using PEX, uh, if you're using enough different material, they might have wrote an H and a C on it or something like that to help you out. Or you can always remember hot's on the left, cold's on the right. It's one of the big rules in plumbing. Uh, but you're going to cut this. Now, here in the training center, I, I try not to cut things so much, so I just kind of got it stuck together. But you're going to pull it apart, and the first thing you're going to notice is water's going to come out of it. So be ready for that. If you're on the outside of the house, just watch out for yourself. You know, it's going to shoot water all over the place. Um, but if it's on the inside, you're going to have to get a bucket or something and try to catch as much of that as you can. Most of the time you're in a garage and you spill a little bit of water on concrete floor, it's not going to matter a whole lot. But go ahead and cut that and uh, I'm going to bring us in a little closer here and start connecting some pecs. Alright, so here's our next step. You're going to have to hook your water lines into your water heater. Uh, to do that, you're going to need uh, some tubing cutters. You're going to need your good old crimpers, the three-quarter version. Um, you need a little bag of fittings and some crimp rings. Uh, now, to do this the way I normally do it, when you line this water heater up, you should have been paying attention to where these water lines were and basically center that top screw on these with where these valves go. All the water heaters are different. So what I normally do, uh, people think it's funny, I like to use my body parts to measure stuff sometimes because you're just kind of getting a rough uh, estimate. So go ahead and get you a measurement. Somebody got a really, a really bad end on that pipe, so I cut, get me a good clean edge to go. Put you a crimp ring on the top and go ahead and put that right there. Um, I kind of like to crimp as I go. Uh, and now you can see you've got your pipe here like this. You can kind of use your pipes to give you an estimate of where you're going to need to cut for that fitting. Yeah, all this stuff still is going to have water in it from your test at your rough end. So crimp ring on either side here. When you put these crimp rings on, you're going to want that little pipe uh, to be exposed about a dime's width is the rule. And then you'll put your 90 in, pop it into place. Sometimes those fittings you got to kind of force them. Get your crimp rings right where you want them, about a dime's width of that pipe exposed. And then make sure your fittings are all the way up on there and give it a good old crimp. Now when it's crimped, it's not going to spin, but it'll spin when it's not crimped. So just remember that when you're going back behind checking stuff. 
If you don't crimp it, it's gonna blow apart. Well, there's your hot side. Pretty, pretty easy to do. Um, and I do like to use uh, white and red just to keep it going. Get my little finger measurement there. That pipe cut. Put your crimp ring on there. Get it all the way up on that fitting. And crimp away. And here again, you can kind of use the pipe there to gauge where you need to cut. Now, you don't have to use PEX. You can also use um, CPVC or you could do it out of copper. Um, those are pretty much the popular uh, types of potable water tubing that are out there right now. There are some other ones, but you don't really see them a whole lot. Get those uh, crimp rings on there, dimes width to that pipe exposed. Push your fitting on all the way to the little um, bumps on the fitting there. Adjust your crimp rings and crimp. Now this setup, like I've got it here, this will work just fine for an interior unit, but on an exterior unit we have to put a pipe cover on this, so uh, you're actually going to have to spin this around so it'll fit in that pipe cover. But for now, I'm going to do it like that. The next piece, the next thing here uh, is your relief. You're going to have to hook that up too. What I normally do is kind of take my pipe. Uh, you're going to want to use white for this because people are going to see it. You don't want red and blue pipes poking out. And uh, I know you can't see the floor here, but when you do your relief, the code says 12 to 6 inches uh, off of the ground when you're cutting this. Uh, but we go for 6 because our inspectors are looking for that 6. So go ahead. Cut your pipe. And of course, you would. Well, ha, forgot my crimp ring. You put your relief on like that. I normally kind of try to twist it around so if it's got a little bow in it, that bow is pushed back toward the wall, the brick wall, or whatever. Um, now, if you're on an interior here, uh, the rough end guys, hopefully they left you a little piece stubbed out down here at the bottom to where you can 90 out of the house because this relief has to go out of the house uh, and it has to be uh, gravity fed from the point that it leaves here. You can't come out with a relief line and go up because uh, it'll hold water, that water gets nasty. You could be potentially creating a what they call a cross connection or something that can contaminate your fresh water supply if that nasty water in that supply were actually to go backwards. Um, so that's pretty much it for hooking up your water lines. The next part of the process here is you're going to have to install your pipe cover. Now your pipe cover, you have to buy it separately and you're only going to use it on an external unit. Uh, it pretty much comes in pieces. You got a front cover that will essentially go right here and, and hide those pipes. Um, you're going to have two side walls. They're the ones with the little wing at the top. You're going to have a mounting bracket. This is for the back side. This is so uh, you'll be able to screw it off to the wall. We're not going to be able to screw this off because I don't have a full wall here, but we'll uh, get enough done here so you know what's going on. The next part, you got a bottom. Notice how the bottom is solid. There's no holes in it. Some of these covers are open on the bottom and you don't have to drill, but this one we're going to have to drill. Uh, and it comes with a little bag of screws. So I didn't crimp my relief line here because I have to build this cover 
and then I'm gonna have to drill a hole for it and I'm gonna have to slide it up through. Now, the other thing here, and I think this is kind of a little design flaw, uh, all these isolation valves are different. This setup would be just fine for an interior unit if you're not having to put a uh, pipe cover on. But since we gotta put a pipe cover on, we're gonna have to make this work. So it's gonna essentially sit in here somewhere right about there. I don't think it'll go all the way, um, but somewhat like that. Now, um, the first thing you're gonna need to do is locate your bag of screws. Um, what I normally do is this front cover part is gonna go on last. So I normally set this on the ground and dump out my little bag of screws into this pan and it'll hold them in that pan. That way you're not losing them in the pine straw or something like that. So, there are four little holes up here underneath uh, this um, front cover there. You're gonna take your little wing walls. One is gonna be uh, the right side and one's gonna be your left side. So let's do the one closest to me first. Get you, get you a little screw, get you a little screwdriver. And we are going to locate one of those little holes and Right, I normally just start with one. Um, one will hold it, uh, but there is a space for two. And this is slotted, so you can adjust it. Um, and I hate to tell y'all guys this, but you have to do this by hand with a handheld screwdriver. Don't do it with your impact, because these are just little old flat pieces of sheet metal is what you're using for your threads. It's not, it's not like a real threaded uh, socket. It's pretty much just a hole punched in the sheet metal. And if you strip that out, you're, you've messed up. Luckily, they do give you two holes, so. Uh, the next part is the bottom. If you see the little holes, that's, uh, that's all. That's just a thin piece of sheet metal, that's it. Now. The bottom does have a front and back. You can figure this out by using your little bracket here. The, the closer holes are going to be your back side. The holes in the front are going to be your front side. So this is going to go right up here on the cover. It goes on the inside. You can tell because the holes are different sizes. The smaller hole is going to be on the inside. careful with this because like I said you can strip it out. But essentially that's the basics of it. The next one you're going to do is you're going to mount um, this part. It goes like this with that flat edge down and this goes up underneath the bottom. Same as these, it's just a little hole punched in sheet metal. Uh, so to save us some time here on footage, I'm going to go ahead and screw this off the rest of the way. Uh, and then I'll show you how to put the front cover on. We've got the rest of the bottom screwed off here for us. Um, now, if I was on, you know, a real home, um, this wall would come on down and I could mount this cover onto the wall, but because I have this braced off and I'm pretty much in a crawl space here, uh, I really can't mount this. Uh, but you will screw it off at the bottom here. Um, 
and then your cover will go on. The cover does have two little holes at the bottom to match up with the two little holes down um, underneath. Now, sometimes these covers want to be a little weird, but that's because that's um, that's why it's adjustable up here with that slide piece. Uh, and then the last thing you would do would be to put screws in the bottom here. And that's pretty much how to install the cover. Now, like I said earlier, this bottom is solid. And now it wouldn't be flapping around like this if I had it anchored to the wall. You are going to have to drill a hole with a hole saw, one that's good for metal, for this sheet metal. You're going to have to drill a hole in the bottom of this for your gas lines because uh, most of the time these things are hooked up by a gas provider, like a uh, municipal gas provider. Um, they're not going to cut your cover. You have to cut it for them. They will hook the gas up for you, but you're going to have to provide them with a hole in this cover. Uh, and the other thing is you're going to have to drill a hole for your relief line. Now, when I would do this, I would normally get a plumb bob or a string with a bolt or something tied to it to give me a rough estimate of where that's going to be. Uh, you're going to want to drill your hole larger, uh, say like two inches or so for your gas people, giving them enough room to play with. Uh, on your three quarter, a one inch hole will be just fine. You don't want the holes to be too big though because uh, bugs and stuff can get up in here and build little nests and, and you don't want a whole lot of that going on and you don't want the holes so big that uh, wind and stuff is blowing up in here because these pipes and stuff down here can freeze in the winter time which is going to bring us to our next part. Insulating your water lines. Now I went ahead and took that cover back off because it was kind of flopping around and I didn't really have a good way to anchor it in the field. Uh, you can insulate now and then put the cover on. Uh, it doesn't really matter how you do it, uh, but your electricians, they love to tie their little wires and stuff and wrap it around your loop here. You're going to want to go ahead and get those out of the way. Um, so you don't want to wrap them up in the insulation. Let's kind of get this guy out of the way. Yeah, he's fine. Um, this black foam pipe insulation with the self-adhesive sticker stuff is what we like to use. Now the hardest part here is going to be cutting these 45s. So you're going to want to get you a decent little razor knife. Um, mount this up there, measure it, and then you're going to kind of cut a little 45 out of it. And then that will go on there. See my little 45 angle? And then if you cut your 45 right, you know, 90, 42, 45 is making 90, so um, you'll have your next angle. Go ahead and just, you know, kind of eyeball it. Use your fingers to measure. Be careful with the razor knife. And that's pretty much it. Now, uh, to secure this even more, it, well, yeah, to secure it even more, you can wrap duct tape around it, but it does have this little, uh, plastic uh, green stuff here, you pull that off and you stick it down. Now, um, I don't want to do that here in the training center because I'm just going to be throwing this stuff away um, and I'm going to be taking this apart a couple times. So, get your other side, mark it, cut it, put it up on there. Get a good good 45 there, you can cut. And mark it. And there you go. And wrap some tape, wrap some tape. Um, make sure that's secure. Now, this is pretty much all we're required to do with code. Uh, but every so often we have a, a hard freeze where our temperatures drop way down and we've had these pipes freeze on us. Doesn't cause any damage to the water heater. Uh, PEX is really resilient to freezing. It, it doesn't quite bust like CPVC or, or copper would if it freezes. Uh, but we decided that we would go one step farther. So we take this wall insulation, just a square piece. Uh, we cut it. 
And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to shove some of this behind here. Of course, the cover's going to be around here. You're going to want to shove some behind. And then you're also going to want to take another piece and put it across the front. Now, when your cover's here, you'll be able to put that cover on and all this will be nice and insulated. At this point, with the cover on now, um, insulated, water lines hooked up, you're pretty much done uh, as a new construction installer because your gas service provider, they're gonna come hook this up for you, your gas line here, uh, and then um, your electricians, they're gonna, they're gonna do this wiring part for you. Uh, but if you have a controller, that's what this blue wire is for. And uh, we are responsible for wiring that controller. So that's gonna be our next step. I'm gonna show you how to do this. Cat5 wire, this blue wire, uh, there's actually several pairs of wire in here. Um, Cat5 wire is what you're generally going to see uh, when installing a controller on a water heater. Uh, it's really for telecommunications. Uh, as long as you're only going, say, five or six feet, uh, Cat5 wire is going to be just fine. But if you're running all the way to the other end of the house, uh, you're going to want something a little bit bigger in uh, size to keep that continuity up. But what we're going to do is we're going to strip this wire on down. What I generally do first is I'm going to take my razor knife and I'm going to kind of just gradually cut around this housing. Be very careful and then you can kind of just pull that off. And there you go, there's your pairs of wires. They've got a brown one, a green one, a uh, orange, and a blue. What I normally do is go for the blue pair. And then I'll take the other ones and kind of just twist them around like that. There is a piece of white string in here, which is for, um, you can grab that white string with your pair of pliers and just rip it and rip this whole cover off as much as you want. Um, now, I used to just strip this wire with my fingernails, um, but if you do that too much, um, it hurts. So get you some type of wire strippers, strip that wire back to where you've got two bare wires. Um, I go ahead and put a little bend in here, like a little hook because we're going to go hook it around some screws. Wiring your remote wire to your water heater. You got this little white box right here and it actually says remote connection. That's what you're looking for. There's a little screw up here on the front. You're going to go ahead and unscrew that. Be careful with that screw. Don't lose it. Don't lose it down in the pine straw. It's going to be very difficult to find. All right, get your wires here. And you're going to want to take this cover and slip it over the wires and just kind of let it hang there. That's for later because we've got to put the cover back on. Now, when hooking these wires up to the screws here, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, positive, negative, um, and it doesn't matter on the controller. You can hook it up either way. It'll know what to do, just as long as one wire is on one screw and the other wire is on the other screw. Uh, all of your tankless heaters are different according to their brand. So this is just one example of a connection. There are other ones out there. Some of them are easier, some of them are harder. But you gotta watch that wire when you're doing this. If you don't have it hooked just right, that screw will push your wire out from underneath it and you will not have a connection. Uh, screw that in and then hook your wires up around that piece there and now we're back to our little cover it's got a little hook in the back 
hooks on like that, find that screw. And she is giving me a hard time. Find that screw, put it up in there. If you can get it started with hand, by hand, that helps. But like I said, be careful. If you drop these screws in that pine straw, and they love to use pine straw outside around the houses, uh, it will disappear really quick on you. But that's pretty much it. You're done there. Um, your extra wire, you can tuck it up behind here, keep it out of the other people's way uh, because your electrician is going to come back behind you and your gas guy is going to come back and do his part too. Uh, but that's pretty much it. If you're a new construction installer, you've done what you needed to do. The next step here is actually wiring up the remote. Wiring your remote. Now, most of the time these things are in the garage. Sometimes they put them in the laundry room. Sometimes they put them in the master bath. Uh, they can put them wherever they want to as long as they ran a wire rough in. But you're pretty much going to have a wire. The blue cap five wire is what you're looking for in the garage. It's, if the electrician ran it, the box is going to be up about shoulder high or head high. Uh, it'll be in a blue box for you to mount it. Uh, if it's something that we're doing, you might just mount it straight to the sheetrock. Uh, but we do have this nice board here. Now, all of your water heaters have different controllers. This is what uh, the Renai controller looks like, and it has two little wires poking out of the back of it. You're going to have to strip these off, off and you're going to have to wire nut these. You would just wire nut them to the wires. Um, but that's your Renai controller. It's a little smaller, a little different. All of them have like a cover plate that comes off and some screw holes. These screw holes are lined up to go in that light socket box. I also have a Noritz controller here. Uh, same deal here. This one has a uh, cover. This one's a little harder to get off, but it has a cover. Now, in order for this one to work, they would have had to turn their box sideways because the screws are on the side. Most of the time, we're just mounting these straight to the sheetrock. This one has a wire with a little blue connector. Uh, most of the time, we just cut this off and um, <clears throat> wire nut it to, the, to our wires here. But it does come with a cable. If you were gonna mount this controller, say just up underneath there, you can use these wire and harnesses and stuff. But most of the time it's in the garage and we cut those off and just wire nut it straight to there. You've got to use your little wire nuts. You gotta use them. If you don't use them, this thing will short out on itself and you'll get a call. I ain't got no hot water. My water heater's broken. I need a brand new one. Uh, and we're not in the business of giving people brand new water heaters. Uh, the next one I've got here is um, the AO Smith controller. They've, some of them have different buttons, different functions. They're all going to work different, uh, but the mounting process is pretty much the same. This one just has two screws on the back of it, which is primarily what you're going to see out in the field. Uh, only a few of them have those, um, the wire hanging out the back. You don't have to wire nut this. Those screws will lock it down and you won't have a short. Now, the one that goes with that here. This is the Renai one. Or Reem, I'm sorry. It's got this funny looking little bracket and then the, the uh, controller's right there. This one doesn't have uh, the face that comes off. It uses this bracket. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount this bracket to the wall. Uh, this bracket will also work with those blue boxes. And I about messed up. This bracket will do the boxes sideways too, but those little prongs go at the top, not sideways like I was about to do it. And 
then you're gonna screw this on off. The bottom one here is slotted so that you can get it good and level. Remember, people don't know plumbing, people don't know electricity, but they know straight. So you won't want it to be straight. The next thing you're going to do is hook this thing up. Now, I put these little tabs on here. Some of them come with these little guys. Uh, some of them you just put the bare wires on there. You don't have to use the little... Um, clip things there but things out here in the little training center we kind of do them over and over and over again so this makes it nice and easy and you don't have to worry about uh, your wires getting just burn up wore out from people tightening them in and out all the time but here again it doesn't matter if it's blue with the white stripe or the solid blue or whatever. But then always leave yourself some extra. Always leave some extra. So if you have to make a repair, you can. Because sometimes uh, somebody could drive a nail through here and it mess up one of these pairs of wires or something like that. But then this one's just going to kind of go on here. It's got little slots. You line it up and you lock it down. Underneath here, there is a little bitty screw. Uh, it's in your little pack of stuff that you get with this guy. We are going to take our little tiny screw and we'll just stick it up in there and thread it in there. This guy can be kind of difficult sometimes as well because you got to find that little hole. There she is. All right. Now, if we had our power turned on, we could turn the power on and start using our water heater. But most of the time in new construction, you're going to beat the electrician. You're not going to have power to the unit. You're pretty much just going to wire it up like this, and you're going to walk away from it. And as a new construction installer, you're pretty much done at this point. Now, I am going to cover how to wire this thing up, and I am going to cover gas line because you might have to go replace a unit. Uh, and if you're replacing the unit, there's not going to be an electrician coming behind you. There's not going to be uh, a gas uh, municipal or a heat and air guy or something like that to come do it. Uh, you're going to have to take that stuff down. Luckily, it's already built for you, so you're just going to disconnect it and you're going to put it back together. So let's jump into that. Making the electrical connection to your tankless water heater. Now, typically in a new construction setting, this is not something you're going to do. Uh, the electrician will generally do this, unless you're having to swap this unit out for some reason or another. The builders probably aren't going to call the electrician and the gas people and all that, so you're going to be in charge of the water, the gas, and the power. So it is nice to know how to do these things. Now. You're generally going to have a piece of Romex wire, which is a solid copper wire. There's three of them in here. There's um, your positive, your negative, and what they call a neutral ground or an earth ground. Um, now, the tankless water heater does have its black and white wires hanging out down here on the bottom. Uh, you could essentially just wire nut it together like that, but that looks like garbage and somebody could come up and yank that apart. You're going to want to feed this into the heater and actually um, make your connection inside this unit. So uh, in order to do that, we're going to have to take the cover off. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, here is the inside of your tankless water heater. Now most people, once they open this thing up for the first time, they're like, what? But really, once you get to playing around with these guys, 
they're pretty simple. All these wire connections, they only go back to one, together one way. These are in a wire harness type assembly, so uh, it's really not that bad. But for the most part, right now, you're not gonna worry about any of this stuff uh, because this is brand new. We're not trying to service it or uh, repair it or anything like that. So when making your electrical connection inside the water heater, there is a little box right here. Uh, now behind there is where you're gonna make that electrical connection. So I'm gonna bring it in a little closer and uh, see how we do at showing you how to do this. Here's our little box for making our electrical connections. Uh, you might have to move some of these wires out of the way to do this. And this is gonna be really difficult for me to show you uh, and stay out of the way to where you can see what's going on. But you undo that little screw at the top. Now be careful with these little screws. Uh, some of them are pretty unique. Uh, find you a little place. Uh, normally when I'm working on these things, there's a gas meter right there and I will put those screws on top of the gas meter. But that comes off. Uh, there is a like a little wire and harness here. Um, but what I typically do is pull this out of here like this. Move that out of the way. And then you're going to take your Romex wire and go back up into that little hole where the other one was. Now, let's strip some wire here. Um, the way these Romexes is set up, uh, there's the white, the black, and then that ground in the middle. If you take your razor knife and run it straight down the center of that yellow, you can cut along that solid bare copper, what they call the earth or neutral ground. Um, and you won't cut into the housing of your other wires. Now, we can strip these wires. You can get a fancy wire stripper, but uh, most of the time you're just going to have um, something like these needle nose with a wire cutter on there. And you're going to want to bend you a little piece in that earth ground. There's a green screw right here. That's where your uh, earth ground is going to hook into. That bare copper wire is going to go on that green Phillips head screw. Most of your earth grounds or green grounds are going to be painted uh, green. And they're all going to have that little groundy symbol there next to it. Uh, so... We take our wires here. And we get our little wire nuts and you take your black wire. And this is actually a lot of wire here. So I am going to cut this back just a little bit. And then we'll have to strip those wires on out as well. And you're doing this, be careful you don't snip all the way through the wire because it's not what you're trying to just cut that housing off of there. And if you see that move where I spin the pliers around, that will help you a little bit too. Of course, these little cutters or so uh, they've been around for a while so they're not exactly the best thing in the world there we go now let's pull this on back down a little bit here we're going to take our black wire black goes to black um, like so, twist it around. Uh, it's a little difficult because you got a, a solid copper and then you've got kind of a braided copper wire here. But you're going to want to wrap that around and then uh, go the wrong way. 
put your wire nut on there. Make sure you push and screw and push and screw. And then I always like to pull on these wires to make sure they're not going to hop out. So make sure we've got a good connection. And I'm not exactly happy with how much wire I've got there. So we're going to go ahead and pop some more off of there. Come on. Come on. There we go. And twist your wires together. And the way these little wire nuts work, there's like a little threaded piece up in there, kind of like a, I guess you'd call it a backwards, oopsie, look at that. See, I did, went to go do my pull test and it uh, it hopped right on out of there. Uh, but like I was saying, it works kind of like a backwards screw. It's like a little spring uh, and it will bite on those wires and give you a good, good, solid, solid connection. And then give your pull on your wires, give it a test. Um, you can undo some of this stuff, get it out of your way. Just remember to put it back and don't cut any of these things. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold this black wire and tuck it back into that hole. And then you fold and tuck your white wire back into that hole. Get your screwdriver, undo that um, ground. And you need to get that ground over to that screw. And then we are going to secure it nice and tight. And that is not going anywhere. And now, if you've got everything tucked in, nice and pretty, good and tight, uh, you're gonna go ahead and put this box back on. And it's not, oh, listen to me. There we go. And nice and tight and you see how that is down at the bottom all nice and pretty uh, instead of just two wire nuts I mean it looks like it's supposed to be like that so that's the way you should do it and then take your little sensors and stuff here and put these back where they were you're kind of done within there for right now so um, you can just lay them in front of it that's it all right, that's how you hook it up. Making your gas connection. Now, as a new construction uh, residential plumber, you're not really gonna be doing this. Your gas provider is gonna do this part, uh, or at the very least, your heating and air guys are gonna do this. Uh, now, if you're a service plumber, you might find yourself doing a lot of gas stuff because plumbers do do gas, um, but in new construction, the only time you're going to have to mess with this is if you're swapping this unit out uh, and they're not going to call the gas people, they're not going to call the electrician twice to disconnect and reconnect uh, all this stuff. They're going to leave it up to you. They're going to figure that you could probably handle it and it's one call, one person. Uh, so if you were swapping this unit out, you would have to disconnect the gas, the electricity, and then take the water down as well. Uh, now I went ahead and kind of set something up here for me. Now this is 
training center stuff. This this is kind of something that's not uh, on a residential house. This this is here. These heaters are residential heaters that we use, but some of this gas stuff I've kind of had to uh, make some things happen to get this thing to work. But I went ahead and built the basic thing here. Now you're gonna have to take this stuff apart. I just put it all together to make it easier for me to carry. Um, I, I know this gas sizing isn't right, isn't going to be the right size, but I'm running this heater off of a, a 20 pound uh, little gas grill propane cylinder. Uh, so it's, it, this is not what you're going to encounter in the real world. But what you're going to do is you're going to take this stuff here. It's called thread sealant. Plumbers love to call it pipe dope. Um, and you're going to coat your threads with it. You're not going to use Teflon tape on this. You're going to use this thread sealer. Uh, I've been told that the gas will eat through the Teflon tape. Um, but I don't know that for sure because I've always pipe doped my gas fittings. And then you're going to kind of screw that guy off. Uh, the next thing is you would have a pipe cover here. Uh, you're going to need to eat, drop down out of that. So I got a long length here. We're going to go ahead and dope that real good. Get, get in those threads really good because this is what's actually making uh, the solid seal. But yeah, we're just kind of painting this stuff on. It comes with a little brush in the can. Um, it's not bad. Be careful with this stuff because uh, if you get it on your pants, your clothes or something like that, it's going to be with you all day. And even if you get it on your hands, some of the old stuff would wash off really well with water, uh, but I've noticed the newer stuff doesn't quite want to do that. We've got a little T here is our next one. Now this is a propane water heater. So it should run just fine off a half inch connection. But in my little world, it's not really about uh, your pipe sizing and your connection as much as it is uh, your inches of water column. Now, you're going to need a pipe wrench on this uh, black iron, and actually I've got some galvanized here just because it's what we kind of had floating around. Um, I always kind of put it together, and then grab your bottom fitting, and watch it as it tightens itself up. Stuff go around, tighten it all up together. Uh, but yeah, what you're gonna want to watch out for is that this top piece because it's made out of a different metal I, I'm not really sure what that is cast aluminum. Maybe uh, I don't know the old plumbers. They'd call it pot metal I, I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure um, But What I'm building here is kind of called they call it a drip leg uh, You got to put a drip leg on your gas uh, appliances it, it's there to catch moisture and dirt and stuff like that now typically when you're running a propane system uh, you don't have a drip leg on it because propane's uh, actually well it's hard to say it's cleaner but it, it is because it's in a liquid a filtered liquid form that's in a tank at at your house it's not traveling very far where uh, with your natural gas that stuff is piped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles across country. Uh, it is networks of natural gas just all over the country that run for miles and miles and miles. And it can build up condensation. Uh, pipes can rust, any kind, all kinds of stuff. But it's because the system is so big. So you don't want to tighten your drip leg. That's what this is. And you can um, build 
build your whole piping system out of solid iron pipe. Um, but we, uh, we like to use uh, these little flexi hoses. Uh, these are really great. Uh, it uh, keeps it simple so you're not having to figure out a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and I am going to put a little valve on this. Uh, a lot of times you might get sent out to hook up the gas and it's just this flexi hose is all you, is all you got to put in there. Now on this flexible part, it does have a flared end piece. Um, people will tell you that on the flared end, you don't need to dope it, but uh, me personally, I, I do it anyway. I mean, what's it gonna hurt? So, this flared end is what makes the union to that uh, flexible pipe. Um, now, in the plumbing world, today we do have uh, a flexible piping system. Uh, they all have names, track pipe. Um, there's a couple other ones out there. Ward Flex. You can do the whole system out of a flexible pipe tubing. Oh, and I didn't want to do that yet. I gotta tighten it up. have to go nuts when tightening this up but you want it snug and you want everything lined up nice and pretty you want that gas valve pointing straight up um, you want these things angled right so that it looks pretty because uh, you know a lot of people out there don't they don't know how gas works they don't know how plumbing works but they know straight and they know crooked and uh, people will look at something and just talk so much because something's not straight. I mean, it could work better than anything else in the world, but if it's not straight, um, they're going to want a brand new one. Well, that's pretty much it. And then, of course, you would connect that to your other end. Somebody's going to provide you with a gas meter. Uh, if you are in the field using a propane unit, you're not going to hook this up. The propane guys are going to do all of that. And I've never really run across uh, where I was swapping out a propane heater because we only, we only run into like one or two of them a year. Most of our houses are spec houses and they have gas in those neighborhoods. So, well, that's pretty much it. That kind of covers all of our install on the tankless water heater. Thank <laughs> you.